I know for those of you all who are tuned in live and watching us today, I know I don't look like Glenn. I can turn to the side. What do you think? I don't know. I don't think I look like Glenn, but he is not here. The show will still go on. We are so excited and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind, where we meet you every weekday morning, 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8.30 a.m. right here. And then we head right on over to Clubhouse, where we have a juicy conversation and bring every single thing together. If you are not already tapped in, guess where you can catch us, y'all? You can catch us on Clubhouse if you want audio only. You can catch us on Facebook. You can catch us on LinkedIn. You can catch us on YouTube. We are everywhere. And today we are streaming live and we can see all of your comments pop up right here. So head on over to one of those platforms so you can see all the juiciness in action. And if not, put the phone down and just listen all the way in. We are here live. Welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. How y'all doing? Hey, Scott, Ramon, Sarah, how you guys doing this morning? Doing fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you said you're not Glenn. I think we picked up on that really, really fast. Yeah. I love that necklace. I love, you know, the hair, the earrings, you know, beautiful, beautiful. Good morning, champ. <laughs> good morning. Why, thank you so much, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited for you to open our show today. I can't wait to hear from you. Well, all right. There's no pressure. No pressure at all. Listen, hey, everybody. I am Lolita E. Walker, and I don't know if we've met, but if not, hello. Um, today, we have been talking all about accountability and then executing on other people's advice that they give us. Here's the thing. It's always about choice, right? If you were with us this morning from 5 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Clubhouse, then you already have heard from T.M. Hyman. You've already heard from Stephen Kuhn. You've already heard from Michelle McLean. And they went all the way in on things like accountability, on choice, on showing all the way up, right? We talked about gratitude this week. And so I'm just, I'm just leaning all the way in and giving you a couple nuggets to challenge your thinking before we start talking as a collective this morning. Now, when I think about accountability, right? I think about somebody holding you to what it is that you said you were going to do. I think about clarity, confidence, and commitment. And it's not the first time you guys have heard me talk about that. Clarity, confidence, and commitment. But today I want to take it from the angle of excuses. Mm. Did that hit somebody all bubbly inside? Excuses, excuses, excuses. Now it was um, George Washington Carver. Let me get my let me get my facts right over here. George Washington Carver, who said 99%. Now listen to this: 99% of all failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. I'm going to say that one more time because I want you to check yourself before you wreck yourself and say, am I inside that 99%? 99% of all failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. Mm -hmm. Do you have a habit of making excuses? Listen, there's no judgment. I know sometimes I make excuses and I want to leave you with a poem that I learned when I was in college. It goes, excuses, excuses, excuses. Excuses are tools of incompetence that build monuments of nothingness. And those who indulge in such theories are seldom capable of anything else. I'm going to repeat it one more time because it's that powerful. Excuses are tools of incompetence that build monuments of nothingness. And those who indulge in such theories are seldom capable of anything else. Now, imagine that you had this toolkit. Now, I carry my toolkit on my back, okay? So I have a book bag. Imagine, I want you to walk with me. Imagine you have a book bag and you're just walking, walking. You got your toolkit back there. And there's this piece, this piece, this bowl that's called excuses. How often do you go into that? How often do you leverage it? And what if you're trying to build everything, build your empire, build your monument, whatever that looks like, build you up and you're using excuses as your foundation, Come on. 
excuses are tools of incompetence. You can't even you can't even build with that. That build monuments of nothingness. You're going nowhere. So today I want to remind you that clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. Clarity. Where are you going and why are you going to that place? Plus confidence. Do you believe in who you are? Do you know who you are? When when you say, I am Lolita Emmanuel Walker, when you insert your name, who are you? Are you living that way? Clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. How committed are we to show all the way up? Sarah earlier talked about um, earlier this week showing up. Or was it last week? It was one week. And um, since you guys have been here, then guess what? You've heard it. Just about the notion of showing up. We don't make excuses. So today, before we get into our, our chat with everybody, I want to just talk about and leave you with this right here. What if excuses were tools of incompetence? Now, as I was thinking today, I have a nine-year-old son, Walker. You guys already know that. And sometimes we play the staring game, right? Sometimes we look at each other in the eyes and we wait to see who blinks. Have you played that game? I'm sure a lot of you guys have played that game. Let me know in the comments if you played that game before. The game of the staring game. Now imagine accountability sitting on one side of the street and then excuses sitting on the other. Imagine both of you guys just looking at each other. It's this big burly person that's looking at you full of excuses and they're looking at you. Who's going to blink first? Are you going to take a piece of that? Is the peer pressure going to come or are you going to move forward? Right? Now let me ask you about the game again. Now, imagine you're back in grade school and you're looking and you're looking and you don't blink and you finally blink. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? <laughs> think back. Oh, my gosh. It was, I didn't blink. I didn't blink. The air got into my eyes. Oh, my gosh. I would have done better. But stop right there. That's when we begin to make excuses. It's all fun and jokes until now we start getting into business, until now we start buying our first house, until now we start wanting to be bigger, better, bolder, and we're not able to do it because we're so locked in on what an excuse could look like. So today I offer you choice. Is it accountability, clarity plus confidence equals commitment, or is it the burly excuse that is this tool of incompetence? Right. That's going to build monuments of absolutely nothingness. And when I look in the mirror, I don't know about y'all, but when I look in the mirror and I say, I am Lolita Emmanuel Walker, I need to build not on nothingness. I need that thing to continue to grow. And who is on my train to help me do that? Well, a lot of you guys are on my train to help me do that. And I say thank you. So accountability looks like who's going to help me do what and for what reason? Who do I need to help me do that? And at the foundation of it all, guess what? The choice is ours to make that thing happen. So how accountable are you holding yourself? How clear are you? How confident are you? How committed are you to walking into this thing called life and doing it scared? Accountability breeds awesomeness. Accountability breeds progress. Accountability breeds the greatness of who you are because we want to grow on the monuments, the monuments, the monuments that keep on lifting and have our name right at the top because we've worked too damn hard to not be accountable for what it is that we want inside of this life, right? Too long. You've worked too long. You are too great to make excuses. Excuses are tools of incompetence that build monuments of nothingness, and those who indulge in such theories are seldom capable of anything else. I cannot wait to talk to the amazing crew about what they thought about excuses, excuses, excuses. Now, are y'all making excuses? <laughs> Lolita. Lolita, absolutely not. And what a great segment. What a great way to start the show. And, you know, we hear this from Glenn and other people, you know, at the end of our life, when we reflect, we don't reflect upon what we did accomplish. We reflect upon what we didn't accomplish. Mm -hmm. And when I'm at that point in my life, and hopefully it's you know pretty long time from now, I hope that my regrets are there's not many. I hope that I don't sit back and say, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. So I'm trying to re reduce as many regrets that I'll have at the end of my life by taking action and eliminating excuses. We first have to hold ourselves accountable before we can lead any others. Yeah. So we must hold ourselves accountable to our goals, our dreams, what we want to accomplish, but we must take action. I would rather make a mistake than sit back and not do anything at all. 
So I think it's a great way to start the show, and it's been a great week so far. But, yeah, clarity plus confidence. I love it. Amazing. Yes. Clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. I tell my clients that all the time. So I love that y'all are going to take this, what I call the equation of success, according to Lolita E. Walker. Um, Scott, you said something and I want to just penetrate just a little bit. You said that you take accountability and I totally agree with that. We are at the foundation of success, our own success anyway. Right. So here's a question to you, Scott. How do you hold yourself accountable? Like what's one way you hold yourself accountable? Well, I lead by example. So, um, you know, I'm here already, you know, at the dealerships, I operate car dealerships. I'm also, you know, Glenn a very long time. So I had to adjust my schedule. We had to pivot this morning. So I had to make choices, which made me get up at four o'clock a.m., pulled into the dealership at 6 a.m. So I can make sure I'm fully prepared for this segment because that's how I choose to show up. So I must hold myself accountable by leading by example every single day. I can't sit up in front of my team of 160 people and sit and say, hey, you need to be the best version of you in all aspects of life. If I show up and I'm overweight or my clothes aren't pressed or I haven't personally groomed myself. So if I truly say that I, I want to be the best version of me in all aspects of life, it starts with me. So I can't sit there with my shirt untucked and, you know, over overweight. You know, obviously I could drop a few more pounds, but at one point I was not that person. I was up telling people to be the best version of them. And I wasn't the best version of me. Mm -hmm. So it starts with me Absolutely. at my household. It starts with me at the businesses I part own. It all starts with me. And that also starts with self-awareness. I know what I need to improve upon. Mm -hmm. The best leaders that are out there that lead companies and lead their families, they're very self-aware. They yeah. know what we need to improve upon. Then it's just taking the action. It's not a knowing thing. It's not a knowing thing. We all know what to do. It's a doing thing. We know what to do. Just do it. Just uh, do it. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, Scott. I Here's what I really love about what you're saying is I absolutely admire and respect you as a leader. And you're talking about in true leadership, I think respecting the people you lead enough to care about the example you set, because that's a core level of respect that you show them. I'll never forget um when the pandemic started there was a lot of messaging that was like this is scary this is hard this is weird um it's okay to just crawl in your bed and watch netflix for two weeks and grieve because we've never experienced anything like this before and that messaging wasn't resonating with me i'll be honest with you and i kept looking and looking and looking and looking for something that would motivate me um because i hadn't found breakfast with champions or hashtag rise and grind yet and i listened to a podcast from um, Rachel Hollis, who I know has had some learning lessons to learn, but she did a podcast episode at the start of the pandemic um, called How to Hold On to the Rope. And she honestly like got in the face of her listeners over her podcast and said, you asked for whatever leadership position you're in. You're a parent. You asked to lead your children through this pandemic. You're a leader of a business. You asked all of the people working for you to come work at your business. You know, like you lead multiple company and you started a company. You asked to be a founder. And she literally in this podcast is like, you don't get to go to bed and turn on Netflix because you asked to be a leader. And so to what you said, Scott, it's like you, you asked if you're a leader, you've asked people to follow you. The number one way that I think you can show them respect is to put in the time and put in the example that honors the fact that they're leading you. So I think that's a super strong point this morning. And, and so that's a really good point. You know what keeps me up at night? It's not me and my family. It's the people that we lead. It's the people that I, that I show up and affect their lives. So, you know, am I perfect? No, no, I'm not perfect. You know, do I make mistakes? Do I sleep in sometimes? And do I show up on point every single day? Are there days that I show up and, uh, and I don't want to be there. I don't want to do it. Yeah, there are days like that. Absolutely. If anybody says that there's not, they're not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. But I don't want my team to know it. I don't want the people that I lead to know that I don't want to be there. And then going back and talking about the pandemic real quick. Yeah, you know, when, when it first happened, I, I was a little lost because there was things out of my control. And we all want to control our own destiny. We want to control how our life goes. So when that happened, it was nothing. It was out of our control. And I really got in a dark space. I've talked about this. I really got in a dark space and I had to kind of smack myself and, and say, wait a minute, what are you doing here? All these people are looking at us. They're looking at me. 
And you can tell even when I talk about leadership and other people, how passionate I get. My face gets red, my, 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 my veins start popping out. You know, it's because I'm passionate about leading other people and the impact that I make in their lives. Our words and our actions matter. And they not only matter to us and the people we lead, but it matters to our team and their families and our communities. And it's a huge responsibility that if you're going to lead people, you know, that we need to take very uh, serious. But as you can tell, when we talk about accountability, I get I get passionate in my veins. I mean, I'm not mad. Just so everybody knows I'm not mad. It's just like <laughs> talking. As long as I don't drop over, you know, I'm fine. And as y'all can see. <laughs> I'm trying to get a Nike endorsement. I said, just do it. And then I got my Pop-Tarts back I here. I see the Pop-Tarts. I wanted to keep us on track because that was such a fire open from you and Lolita. Yeah. But I see so, the, I see the got, product placement. The blueberry. I, don't know what, I don't know what my wife was thinking with the strawberry back here. But anyway, trying to mix it up a little bit. So Listen, hey, Scott, I absolutely love what you talked about, about leadership and Sarah. And one of the things I was in corporate for almost 20 years before I leaped to start my own company, Walker and Walker Enterprises. And I remember having direct reports. I had direct reports for most of those years. And the biggest thing is communication. And when we talk about accountability, it's also about managing up and holding our managers accountable because sometimes we assume that because managers are in leadership positions that they know what the hell they're doing. Sometimes we put people in without the proper training, but guess what? We're not going to focus on that. What we can focus on, to your point, is what is in our control. And what is in our control is to, if you are not having one-on-ones with your manager, create them create them. Hey, I'd love to put, I want to put something on your calendar. I want to get with you for 30 minutes inside of this meeting. I'd love to just go over what my projects are, how I'm doing and to grab a little bit of feedback, right? Make these things happen. Hold other people accountable for the progress that you want to see in your life. If they're not helping you on your train and they're in a leadership position to do so. And I think so often we fall into a place where we don't want to have the difficult conversations. And here's the thing. They don't really have to be that difficult. You don't have to be defensive. You go in with a plan and you execute on it. You take the action on it. And so I'd love to hear what you guys' perspective is on maybe one thing that we can leave the audience with on accountability. How can you hold yourself accountable? Scott said, just do it. And I say, have the difficult conversations and make them not so difficult. Yeah, Yeah, I I would say, oh. Well, I would say two things. One, if if um, what Lolita is sharing is new to you, I would Google the term managing up, um, which is what it's called, because there are a ton of great resources on um, exactly what she's talking about. So you can dig in and learn um, a little bit more. And um, the one other thing that you said that I really want to hone in on, Lolita, this idea of asking for what you need. I once saw um, Jill Abrams, um, I believe is her name, who was the former uh, CEO of the New York Times who got fired, um, speak in a lecture. And she was talking about the fact how she kept getting promoted position over position over position because she was a good journalist and no one ever gave her leadership training. And she didn't know that she could ask for leadership training. So I think along with asking your boss, whatever position you're in, if you can, you know, how you can improve at your job, if you've been promoted to a position of leadership and you haven't been given any leadership training, I'd say that's something you can ask for as well. Yes. And put it on your development plans. Make sure that you force the conversations and you can do so in a way. I do a leadership training. And some of these things here are things that we can do as employees and quite frankly, as employers, making sure that we are gifting these type of tools and techniques to our employees so that they can be successful. We are only as good as our employees. Right. Managers only look good when their employees are the bomb.com because <laughs> we delegate and disappear. So we need that. Right. Yeah. And Dora Maria, I wrote two articles on managing up for Mashable. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you pull in links. <laughs> you know, let me share just real quick what, you know, the mistake I made was I only focused on what was important to me. When I found out and talked to the staff and found out what their three personal and three professional goals, and then I sent and got to know them. You know, if you truly show people you care, you can manage them differently. Mm -hmm. If you think that I truly don't care about you and it's only about the numbers and only about the profitability, then it's going to be a totally different relationship. But if I find out what your personal professional goals are and then I sit and say, hey, you know what, Lolita, I know you're not, you know, you're you don't feel like probably making the phone calls or you're not doing the things you need to do in order to get to this goal. But remember, you want to buy that first house. Remember, you want to you know, start the college fund. Remember, we want to max out that 401k. 
So we use their personal goals in order to push them. But it all starts with caring. If your staff doesn't think you truly care about them individually and their families, and it's a fine line because I do care. I care a lot, but I also want them to be the best versions of them. And the people that are around you that truly care about you are going to push you. They're going to push you. And it's all how you react to it. Just remember, when 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 I kind of distance myself from some staff members, it's because I've tried. I've tried to positively motivate them. I try to kick them in the rear end, literally. Let me maybe verbally, not not literally. But anyway, you know, I've tried the different ways to motivate them. And I don't really want to give up on them, but we we focus on the ones that when we push them, they react. So I um, love that. I think we could do an entire show just on leadership and how amazing would it be if we just all continue to go around and give one tip, one tip, one tip. People's lives are going to shift in how they show up to work and how they lead differently. I love this so much. Super powerful. Open Lolita. Thank you, Scott. And now I have the honor of introducing Ramon Ray, who brings us the good news every single day. Founder of Smart Hustle Media, StreamYard Ninja. We are here for it, Ramon. We're super excited. Hey, 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 can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. It's been an honor to be here, even though I know people can watch us afterwards. I just want to say that, man, this has been amazing, amazing to do. Let me stop my little timer here. Timer here. And this is a new thing. So, by the way, if Candice and the team in the back, feel free to take over the uh, highlighting and all that. But I like the four shot here, so that's fine with me. Uh, but I'll be real quick. Won't be a, few, be a few minutes for the good news today on Rise and Grind. But I must say, I think we're rocking along, and, uh, and I'm having a lot of fun being here today. So with that, let me start good news segment, as I got four million taps and 10,000 comments. Here we go. So our good news nuggets today are how to deal with imposter syndrome at work, why words matter, and the 12 best investing apps that you may want to consider for your business, for your life, for your health, for your family, as it were. Our goal when we do good news is to do one of three things, make you smarter, make you laugh, or just Oh, warm your heart. So let's dive into it. And as Sarah said, I'm Ramon Ray. You can get to know me better at RamonRay.com or on the IG at Ramon Ray Smart Hustle. So how to deal with imposter syndrome at work. Some of you may be working for a company, working in a traditional nine to five, as it were, job. Uh, some of you may be uh, working for yourself, as many of us here do, who are our hosts. But there's a few things to consider this aspect of feeling like you're fake at work. Feeling like you're not enough. Feeling like maybe you have a position you didn't deserve it. We didn't coordinate this, but I think it was Sarah who talked about the, the person who didn't know she could ask for leadership training. Well, here's the solution for that. It is time for you to create, get ready, drum roll, brrr, a brag folder. When you rock and do good things, give yourself a high five. Give yourself a high five. Celebrate it. When you get positive feedback or a compliment, anything like that, take a screenshot and put it in a folder. I do that professionally. I have a little folder called Kudos. Now, I do that for, as it were, selfish good reasons. As a, as a, I am the brand, right? As a personality, I save a lot of this to show clients. But even for those of you at work, working a job, when your boss or someone says, good job, says kudos, save that. Enjoy that. Because those times when you're feeling like you're an imposter, when you're feeling like you're not enough, those are the times when you can bring that thing to life. So that's how we can get over imposter syndrome, especially at work or even in our own lives. Another thing I want to talk about today is why words matter. We have some amazing wordsmiths on stage and definitely Lolita E. Walker holds that reign for sure. But words are powerful things. Bible talks about, I think, in James or Genesis or Jude or Revelations. Somewhere there, they can break people up or tear them down. Lyrics can inspire hope, move people into action, or on the flip, flip side, promote unhealthy lifestyles. So this is just a reminder, and this is from our friends at Thrive Global, to be careful what words we say. It's a reminder today, right? As we're live on January 25th, I think it's Tuesday, maybe it's uh, February, maybe we're in March. I'm not sure what date it is. I'm so tired. But the point is, no matter what time it is, our words matter. And third, good news of the day, just to list a few investing apps. Scott Simons, I know this is near and dear to your heart, sharing it. 
that everybody can be, as it were, a millionaire in their own right. Scott talks about saving money, putting it aside, investing it. Once you do that, have a rainy day fund. Once you do that, maybe you invest in some other things. So everybody can grow wealth. I happen to use Scott Betterment, and this is not financial advice. You're sharing some tools I use. But a few of the tools they talk about, all they do listed here, Robinhood, Acorns, Elevest, TD, Stash, Alley, E-Trade, Betterment, Fidelity, Public.com, Wealthfront, and SoFi. So the point is, those of you who have not yet started managing or investing or putting aside your money, in addition to a regular savings account and checking account, you may want to take a buck, take two bucks, take three bucks, metaphorically, and invest that to get a higher return in your money. And I would say, Scott, what I've learned is just the discipline of putting it aside. I look at my money a week later, a year later, five years later, I'm like, oh. Daddy got a few thousand put aside. So I'm Ramon Ray here, part of the amazing Rise and Grind team on the Good News segment. And I hope you all have enjoyed it. Back to the host as I hit tab 47 in the amazing Chrome browser. I'm back. (laughs) Tab 47 only. I thought you were going to say you were on like 99. But Ramon, I loved it. uh, There's so much to talk about about each of the three. So Mm -hmm. I'll just tap on two. Words have power and there's power in our words. Absolutely. And hands down. And I want to tap into that. You called it a brag folder, a brag box. I call it an I am wonderful folder. I love that you said that it's so important, not only for the reasons you gave so that we can tap in on our days when we're not feeling so great. But, you know, when your review time comes and you did all this stuff and you can't remember because at age 44, I'll be like, oh, what did I do? You could go right back in there and see all the amazing work. So if you do not have your I Am Wonderful folder, your kudos folder, your whatever folder, make sure you get it started today, electronically and physically. That's what I got. I loved it, Ramon. Thank you so much. Want to talk to us there. What's up, Sarah? Yeah, good morning. Um, And for everyone who missed what I was just saying on Clubhouse, Ramon Ray made this live stream possible today. We are so grateful for you. I'm going to also hit on um, the first point that Lolita was talking about, because statistically, it's women who are much more likely to have imposter syndrome. It's proven that men will generally apply for a job if they have about 60 percent of the qualifications. But women need to feel like they have more than 90 percent of the qualifications to apply for the same job. Um, So as a woman in particular, if you're like, I don't know if I'm good enough, having that reminder of the things that you've already accomplished, it can also help you if you're a champion who's thinking about a side hustle or starting your own business or where you want to move around in your organization to see what are the compliments that I typically get from people that are my superpowers and the things that I'm really good at. I think we need to be cautious of not, you know, stretching so far that we say we can run a fortune 500 when we have one year of business experience, but we do need to believe in ourselves absolutely. And what we are capable of, especially all the women in the room over to you, Scott Simons. (laughs) Yeah. You know, Ramon, you talked about money, man, you know how to get me excited. We're talking about leadership, but we're talking about money. Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. The government wants the tax money first because they want to get paid first. We need to, of course, pay our taxes, pay our fair share. Um, But we need to pay ourselves first by, if you work for somebody, if you're an entrepreneur, max out your 401k would be your first goal. That would be the first goal I have to you. You live on 70% taxes and everything. You invest 20%. You tied the 10% as one strategy that you could deploy. My wife, you know, we've been married uh, and and dated for over 30 years. I said, honey, I said, you need to max out your 401k when we were in our 20s. She goes, "Okay." She goes, but how am I going to like that's a lot of money at the time because we weren't making a whole lot of money. I said, honey, you will thank me later. She just left her job and came to work with our family business. She got a check in the mail. It was nine hundred and some thousand dollars. She's 47 years old. Excuse me, 47, 47. Yeah. And she said, what's this from? I said, honey, that's when I asked you to max out your 401k. So pay yourself first. The the debt that you have owns you. Make smart money decisions Hmm. and you'll thank me later. Absolutely. And Scott, I'm going to thank you today because I must say I've done some things you have. And a shout out to my friend, Sarah, we should have him here, Mike Michalowicz, offer. I think he sold over 1 million books, Profit First. It talks about many of the principles we talk about, Scott. So maybe that's something, you know, we, he's like the Mike Zeller of finance. Anyway, thank you all so much. I know we got more to do. I'm going to hand it to Sarah Ololita just for my brain because I can't be on camera, do tabs, click at the same time. I'm like <laughs> maxing out my human potential. So I'm just going to quietly go off thank camera and give you me 10 Ramon. seconds. You're welcome. Ramon, you will 
never max out your human potential. It is unlimited. Let's explore the endless possibilities that are Ramon Ray. Thank you so much, Ramon. And guess what? We have an amazing artist that we want you guys to hear from, Aya Kareem. I pray that I'm saying her name correctly, but wait until you hear her music. Hashtag wonderful. Let's rise and grind. And she is coming in three, two, one. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, how are you? Welcome to Thank the you. party. I saw you guys sing Aya or Aya. It's Aya. <laughs> oh, thank you, Aya. Yes, you look so beautiful this morning. You will be thank singing you. for us. And we can't wait to hear from you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, we understand that. Guess what? You came early and you came breach. And so your music has to be amazing. We can't wait to hear. <laughs> now, are you going to be singing live for us today? Or are we going to be playing? No, I'm going to. Why you gotta act like that? Cause we fading Why you do me wrong like that? I've been patient It's not that I want you, but I need you I've been out here, I wanna see you So why you gotta act like that? Act like that You got me blowing your phone up it don't make no sense at all, no You just got me feeling that there's something going on I really wanna understand I'm falling deep, I can't pretend I'm losing my frame, yeah Sitting here trying to reflect Can't get you out of my head I just want you in my bed Can we stop playing this game? Can we stop playing this game? Why you gotta act like that? Cause we fading Why you do me wrong like that? I've been patient It's not that I want you, but I need you I've been out here, I wanna see you So why you gotta act like that? Act like that I'm a mess, I'm faded I'm stressed, I can't take it At the crib, waiting for you Naked, yeah, I just really need your body Feel your warmth up on my body Need your kisses on my body I wanna give you all of me Sitting here trying to reflect Can't get you out of my head I just want you in my bed Can we stop playing this game? Can we stop playing this game? Why you gotta act like that? Cause we fading Why you do me wrong like that? I've been patient it's not that I want you, but I need you I've been out here, I wanna see you So why you gotta act like that? Act like that Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good. Listen, before we get to Scott, because he is smiling from ear to ear too. Aya. 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 So amazing. My apologies. I know you're just getting over COVID, so we send our healing vibes directly to you. Thank you. Um, your voice is so healing. As soon as you Thank started you. singing, I could feel myself just flowing and flowing. So my question for you right now is um, really around when did you recognize your gift of voice? My mother said I always sang, even when um, I was like on the toilet or under the shower as a, as a, as a, as a four or five year old. And then um, I always, I started with dancing. I guess I was always singing while I was dancing. And then I think in the beginning of high school, um, I took a lot of music courses like uh, piano, um, the flute. <laughs> 
and I started singing and there was a um, music teacher that said, hey, you can really sing. And they were motivating me to sing. And then I just started singing. Like, that's how it happened. <laughs> so somebody saw your gift in you and recognized that you had a passion and you were doing it all the time. That's so amazing. We talk on here a lot about, you know, you're already working in your innate gifts. And sometimes it's other people who can say it to you. So I'm going to toss it to Scott. Scott, what did you think about this amazing music? It was it was unbelievable. So, so it's so very nice to meet you. You have such a beautiful, beautiful voice. So Thank what's you. your what's, what's your inspiration or who is your inspiration to do what you do? Uh, I have a muse that I always write about and that person takes me everywhere. Negative, positive, pain, love. So, yeah, that that's my inspiration. Like all my songs are real, even if it's like I'm also a songwriter. If I, if I have to write a rap for somebody, it's always something from most of my own songs are always something for myself, from myself that I experienced. Um, but if it's, for example, a song for somebody else, I take something from myself and something I hear that a friend has been through or, you know, it's, yeah, it's mostly pain, unfortunately. <laughs> So, so you don't like go through a breakup and then immediately start just to, to help go through that or have you went through a breakup and then you started to write and put your words down in order to cope with that breakup. And then you shared it with everyone else that's going through a similar situation. So you're yes. grieving through a process and then helping other people deal with that okay. similar situation. Yep. Well, this is not a breakup. Um, it's just an inspiration. <laughs> it's not. It is what it is. But uh, it's very beautiful, but sometimes very painful. And I started writing these songs because I was trying to communicate. So every, almost every song that I have uh, for my project are letters to my muse to try to communicate. So this was like, why you gotta act like that? Like I felt like I was losing my best friend because the communication with the long distance was getting very weak. So um, yeah, I wrote this song. Beautiful. Simple, Thank beautiful. You. Just listening to you is so amazing because as a creative, I think it's so important that we share exactly this inspiration. And I love that you talked about, I have a muse. And so I take a piece of me, but guess what? I'm also leveraging the skill, like the experiences of everyone around us. And I love that you said, this wasn't really a breakup, but it's a piece of me. So the pieces of you, do they talk to you? Does this muse talk to you and say, hey, this is the feeling? Do you feel something inside? Or how do you know it's time to write? Um, I know it's time to write whenever it's for example, um, Yeah, I can't curse on the radio. But, um, last year, my birthday, um, we couldn't see each other because he had to work. So I went to the studio and wrote uh, a word, uh, 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 a whole song, uh, and the song is called The B Word. <laughs> and uh, I put all my frustrations in it. And he was like, oh, wow, you're funny when he heard it. And then he was like, but guess what? It kind of really sounds like a hit. And then I played it for a lot of people, and they were like, oh, that's really good. We should make you mad more often. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just a feeling like, I think as an artist, as a creative, we're extra sensitive. So um, whenever I go through something, I feel like my, my feelings are a little stronger, maybe. I mean, I can't talk for anybody else, but I feel like they're very strong compared to the people around me. And the only way I can get a bit of the feeling, like I can feel good again, is if I write it off me. I have to write a song. Like, it's it's necessary. I can't not write. It's just, Aya, that is so powerful your voice is so yeah. beautiful i hope will you come back and join us so that we can hear another song from you a little bit later yeah. on in the show because we absolutely. would absolutely love to hear from you again thank you so much for being here You're welcome. thank you much today for we are going to move from one beautiful voice to another crazy beautiful voice i have the honor of introducing my friend scott simons who is just an exceptional Human being. He's one, he's the managing partner at Carter Meyer Automotive. He owns 25 businesses. He wants to be your only call if you have one call to make. And I just can't wait for us to all get to know you a little bit better this morning. Sarah, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, this is a real honor for me to be on the show and, uh, and showing up. And, you know, the message I want to get 
that I would like to share with everybody this morning um, is anything you want to do in life, you can accomplish it. Don't let anybody talk you out of your dreams or anything that you want to accomplish. Um, here I am on a morning show. And at one point, I didn't want to use my voice because of my Southern twang. And that's what actually has made me unique in how people have remembered me. So, you know, what maybe you feel like is odd is actually your uniqueness is, is your gift. But my story started, um, you know, in Southern West Virginia. And I want to kind of explain how I've gotten to where I'm at and all the people that have helped me get there. Um, because I have so many people, you know, to thank and that have played an influence in my life. But my mom and dad taught me a lot of things, you know, being from Southern West Virginia. Um, my dad worked five jobs. My mom, they, they worked. Um, they showed my brother and I a work ethic uh, that uh, is second to none. Um, if you want something, you know, work for it. I, we do handouts. We do believe in giving people an opportunity and helping other people when, when possible. But the work ethic that I learned uh, from my family uh, growing up in the area that we grew up from. So because they sacrificed for my brother and I, everything they did was to give me and my brother, George, an opportunity. Now, he was blessed with the intelligence. He's a doctor. I happened to get in the auto industry, which I happen to love the auto industry. But but growing up, I always dreamed about being a car dealer. And um, after I got out of uh, I worked since I was 15 years old. Um, I started taking college courses in 10th grade, working the whole time because that's what I saw my dad do. So I saw my dad working five jobs and I said, well, to go to school and work one job, you know, what, what's what's the big deal? And, you know, even people would say, well, how are you going to become a car dealer? Do your parents have money? No, you know, they, they, they've saved, you know, is your parents a car dealer? No disrespect to anybody uh, that is. I happen to work for Carter Myers Automotive Group. I'm a partner with Liza Borges. She's a fourth generation car dealer, but she's as best as any CEO in the country. So, you know, growing up and struggling, I didn't I didn't want to see um, I didn't want to live in scarcity. You know, I saw my parents sitting around worried about money all the time. My dad never made more than thirty two thousand dollars a year, you know, in one job. And I saw, you know, People, you know, them arguing and worrying and, you know, there was so much scarcity. And I said, I, you know, I just don't want to I love them and I appreciate their sacrifice, but I, I simply don't want to I don't want to live this way. This is not a this is not a favorable way to live when, you know, you, you may eat one time a day or, you know, at first we lived in a house with our aunt till we saved up enough money to buy our first house. And our first car was a Chevrolet celebrity that we paid a couple hundred dollars for. And my dad gave it to a tech school to fix. Bondo was falling out. And I used to tell my dad, hey, dad, don't, don't pull up to the front of the school. The kids will make the kid, the kids will make fun of me. And my dad said, son, don't you ever, don't you ever be ashamed of who you are ever. And that and that stuck with me. You know, other lessons that I learned from my dad and my mom, if you say you're going to do something, your handshake or your word means something. You do it. Um, so those are some of the things that my parents taught me, you know, earlier in life is is to dream big and work really hard. And I think a lot of people dream big, but they don't want to put the effort behind it to accomplish their goals and their dreams. And most people that I talk to um, that reach out to me, they're kind of trapped in this life that they created. And they're kind of counting down that time till they retire or, um, you know, they're just, they're basically dead, but they're still alive. So I started off in my journey uh, after I got my master's degree I, you know, I started off selling cars and people said, well, why would you go get a master's degree and go sell cars? You could just went straight from college. Well, I wanted to prove to people that I could, you know, that I could, you know, make it through college. I learned a lot of things going through college. So I embarked on my journey uh, over, you know, 25 years ago selling cars. And I remember my first interview, the gentleman said, I said, I'm going to own a car dealership. And he said, I've never even sold a car before. And he said, well, you know, how are you going to do that? And he kind of laughed at me. And I said, well, sir, if you give me an opportunity, I'll show you. So I went from selling cars into finance, which if you go through the auto industry, it's finance, sales management, general sales manager, general managing, managing partner, which I'm proud to say I'm a managing partner with Carter Myers Automotive Group. But through that time, people would sit and say, hey, you know, you live a pretty blessed life now. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. But the struggle 
the missing activities, the working six days a week, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, you know, battling depression, um, losing who I was at one point, um, you know, having so much pressure on you that you just don't know if you could take it or not. The times that I went to alcohol and lost who I was because I was wanting to accomplish this goal so bad because I had so many people that doubted me as I was growing up. And you know what? When they doubted me, I deserved that doubt because I was lost at times. But I knew that if you're a good person and you have a good heart, it all works out. If you have a good heart and you continue to not give up and keep pushing forward, you are the only one that knows what you're capable of. Don't listen to other people. If they give you feedback, yes, listen to them, but take that feedback and then take the action. But my whole message that I wanted to get to everybody this morning is, you know, dream big and, and work really hard. Um, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter the mistakes that you've made in the past. You know, let those go. If I sit and thought about all the mistakes that I made in my life, I would just be trapped in what happened in, in, in behind me. There's a reason why our windshield is so big and our rearview mirror is so small. I don't look back. I just continue to look forward. And I think if you're a good person, you work really hard, you can accomplish anything in life. And you're going to go through ups and downs. But for the people that have sacrificed for you, your parents, your family, the people that believed in you and you didn't believe in yourself, don't let their work, don't let their belief in you go in vain. Keep pushing forward and you can accomplish anything you want in this life. I'm living proof and I still have a long way to go to be the person that God envisioned me to be. I'm a work in process. I fail often. I make mistakes, multiple mistakes a day. But I truly believe if you're a good person, it all simply will work out. So I appreciate the opportunity to share with everybody this morning. And I hope that it made some impact in your life. Scott Simons, oh my goodness, your story has made an impact from the comments that are going across our, our screen right now to just the heartfelt vulnerability of it all, Scott. A little bit more tears would have been coming out my eyes yeah. because I resonated with exactly what you were talking about, humble beginnings and recognizing that I didn't get here just by chance. I've earned every single step along this way and this way hasn't been easy. The way hasn't been easy. And Scott, I think for you to be able to say, I was raised and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed about my father picking me up in that truck. I was just so embarrassed. I wanted to run away. How often as children have we been so embarrassed by our parents and later on grew up and said, wow, it is so, I'm so thankful to you for what you did and how you instilled it. But some people don't have the opportunity to say it because they're not here anymore. So I think Scott, from what I'm getting is a reminder to say thank you along our way, to say thank you for being hard on me because it made me the person that I am today. Thank you for, for, for making my foundation solid uh, that now I can stand upon that and come back today. I just wanted to say thank you, Scott, because that is a reminder that sometimes we feel like we're in quicksand and we get lost and that's okay. But the recognition is knowing that we can say it and then we can ask for help so that we can get pulled out of that quicksand. So good, Scott. Thank you. Yes. Don't, don't let pe the people that believed in you, don't let their sacrifices go in vain. Don't let the sacrifice that my mom and dad gave for me. I have an obligation to be the best version of me and be the best human I can be because of the sacrifices and how my parents uh, showed me the way. So their, their sacrifice can't go in, in vain. You know, I've got to make a bigger impact in this world. And that's the reason why when Glenn asked me to be on said, I don't know how we're going to make this work, all of us, but you know what? <laughs> Something's tugging at me that I need to be here. So maybe I can impact that one person. But thank you, Lolita. You know how much I love and respect you. Oh, I love you too. And your employees are saying, this is why I joined CMA. Yeah. So excellent, Scott. Thank you. You said it earlier. And then I want to go over to Sarah because I know she has something that's so good. You said it earlier is that people want to work for you when you truly care about them and you got to care about yourself too. So 
You are proof, Scott. Good morning. You know, Lolita, the, the most frustrating part is when you feel like you care about people more than they care about their families. Yeah. That that that's that's heartbreaking. That that keeps me up at night when I feel like that I care more about them and their future than they care about themselves. And you just want to grab them and shake them. Obviously, that's not acceptable. But the ones that you do make an impact with, it keeps you going. But um, thank you, Lolita. Absolutely. Sarah, jump on in here. So good. Thank you so much. Yes, Scott, I am such a fan of yours. And one of the things that I think is actually really beautiful about um, your pop in today is that we were talking about accountability and that Lolita opened by saying, don't make any excuses. Because one of the things that I think is so beautiful and such a lesson from you, Scott, is that you could actually take your story either way. You're in here saying, I see the sacrifices my parents made. I want to honor them. I want to, you know, honor myself and my family and everyone who works for me. And so you choose to be the shining example. You could have gone the other way. You could have made every excuse in the book. I, you, you could have just flipped it on its axis. I was born poor. I was born without this. This was a challenge. This was an obstacle. This person told me I couldn't do it. But instead of taking those as excuses, you took those as fuel. You took that as motivation to just honor everyone around you and who you could be. And you're just an incredible shining example in this community. And I'm so grateful. Um, the many things that I'm grateful to Glenn Lundy for, I'm grateful that he connected us together. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. Y'all, your, your kind words uh, and how much y'all have poured into me and believe in me, even when I was asked to be a part of this. And I was kind of like me. You all want me to be a part of this? You've got all these people that can communicate. So can I actually tell you that when Glenn called me up and then I promise I'll wrap Candace when Glenn called me up as we were like putting the crew together when he was like, and Scott Simons is going to do it, too. I literally was like, what? Because we've been like, he's way too busy at CMA. In the morning. There's no way Scott. He's like, Scott Simons is in. And we're like, yes. So it's so, so, so we did a happy dance for all y'all. But Scott, we definitely thought there was no way that you'd be in on this with your schedule. So we were super excited about that. I am going to quickly reset the YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, and tell you all <laughs> that you are here for Hashtag Rise and Grind. It's a daily morning show we do from 7 to 8.30, live across all social media. And then we head on over to Clubhouse for 30 minutes afterwards. And I'm super excited today because we have an incredible, incredible interview guest with us. Mike Zeller, who actually I had the opportunity to connect with through Clubhouse, one of the first Clubhouse rooms that I was in, even before Breakfast with Champions, um, I was with uh, Mike Zeller and his marketing mindset mastery rooms, and I got to know him. And so I'm so grateful that I'm going to have the opportunity to interview you for a bit this morning and then toss you over to the crew so we can all get to know you better. Good morning, Michael. How are you doing? Morning, Sarah. Great to see you, Lolita, Ramon, and Scott, and uh, amazing people from across the world. So excited to be here. Absolutely. So, Mike, one of the things that's really um, interesting to me about you are, I mean, like, move my face from side to side. So we can be side by side, Ramon. I'll just, I'll just make some space. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about your story is that you're super candid, not only about how you help people be successful and make money and break free of limiting beliefs, but that kind of as we were talking about with Scott just now, it wasn't always a linear path for you that you also got in your own way, lost money. Like talk to us about your journey to get to where you are today to help business leaders. Yeah. I mean, I've started uh, 16 plus businesses, probably closer to 20 now. And man, uh, you know, I, I just always embrace that uh, the success is not in necessarily the end result in whether or not like I nailed it with that project or that business, um, but it was it's often in the learning. And if you look, one of my favorite female entrepreneurs, Sarah Blakely, uh, good to see everybody. Rita, Glenn, miss you as well, my friend. But um, one of the things that I see is like you have a healthy embrace of failure and you have a different perspective on failure. If you look at what I like to call the middle class mindset versus the mindset of the abundance is failure is temporary. Everything, success and failure is temporary. And it's not uh, it's not really failure if you learn. And and so, you know, I'm going to I wanted to double my failure rate. So I would double my success rate over the long term. And um, uh, so I also know, like, as you go through a lot of mistakes, 
what happens is you end up learning, accelerating your learning, you get greater awareness. And I know, heck, I'm 42. I've got at least another 40 years to create. I've, I'm only really 10 years into my entrepreneur career. Um, so I got another 40 years ahead. It's going to be a ton of fun. And, uh, and then um, I think your, your mistakes also are fuel for your, your setbacks, set you up for your comeback. And so if I look at, you know, resistance, when we when we look at our failures, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I got a, lo- a little long-winded on this answer, but if you, it's almost like a Boeing 737 taking off. You know, how much does a Boeing 737 weigh? 485 I don't tons. Know. <laughs> I know, it's freaking heavy. It's a big, heavy metal bird. But how does that get off into the night air carrying, you know, 200 passengers? It, get, it lifts off because it faces enough resistance. The resistance actually forces it up into the night sky. But if it doesn't hit it with enough speed, enough intensity, enough focus, uh, then what happens is it stays on the ground. Hmm. And so, you know, when we go through life's journey, it's like, man, we gotta, we got to go after it um, and not play small. It's one of my quests even this year is to expand myself and not play small um, and embrace really the opportunities to learn and grow even more. So a follow-up question I have on that is we often hear successful people talk about their previous failures, talk about how they failed, you know, forward. Oh, well, I tried this and I failed, but once they're successful, what do you say to the person though, who's in that right now, who's facing that resistance right now, and who feels like they're never going to get to the end of the journey where they're going to get to say, I failed. And then I succeeded. Like what is kind of your advice to that person just feels stuck? Yeah. Um, one of the things that helps me a ton, like I, I, I literally just come from a speaking engagement. This is in, uh, I think it's January 2020. And I was in LA and I was on the airplane and I did really well. Like it, it was amazing. It was a, a retreat a mastermind that I spoke at and one of my clients and, and mentees was hosting. And I come back and I'm on the airplane. And I just get hit with this wave of despair of like, man, I'm just not making progress. And I'm just like, uh, I feel, I felt like a failure. <laughs> and I was hit with all these things and all these feelings. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm on the airplane. And I just started, I took my journal out and I said, I just said, you know what? I'm going to write down all my areas of progress in the last month. And 20 minutes later, I had like 42 areas of progress. And it's like, what we focus on is what we attract and what we, and often our feelings are dictated by what we focus on. Um, and if we are stuck, you know, I, I was coaching another um, uh, business owner, she owns a car dealership uh, yesterday. And the second thing I would say, all right, is flip into an alter ego. Like my disempower, the, the, the pers- personality, the, demeanor, the attitude that got me into the mess, that gets me in the defeated mindset um, or a stuck mindset is not going to be the one that gets me out of it. But the, the human mind, one of the most underutilized resources is our imagination. Einstein was fascinated with the human imagination, right? Great geniuses of our era have great imagination, but we all have vastly undertapped imagination capacities. And, and so like I, something that helps me and has helped a lot of my clients is like flip into an alter ego. And so I've got magic Mike, magic Mike can get me out of jams. Weak ass Willie got me into the jams. Weak ass <laughs> Willie is, is the one that, that is wants to play small and he's got a tail, his tail tucked between his legs. And then I've got a new alter ego. Hollywood Mike Z that's coming out this year too. He's more entertaining. Oh, I'm excited about that. And speaking of things that are coming out this year, we're going to have to talk about your book in a minute. But, you know, you touched on imagination. And I know that you became a dad over the last year. And I always think kids are the most imaginative, um, just humans. And I'm curious how that's changed your mindset around anything, around imagination, around just like how has becoming a dad over the past year changed kind of your outlook? Uh, It's amazing. I love, love being a dad. And interestingly... So uh, in 1968, they did the study, uh, and I read about it in Stephen Kotler's book, The Art of Impossible. Uh, but they did a study on four and five-year-olds. 
and four and ninety eight percent of four and five year olds scored on the genius level of creativity. Versus by the time someone got to be an adult, only 2% of adults scored on the genius level of creativity. So they outscored NASA astronauts. Four and five-year-olds outscored NASA astronauts um, in 1968. So, and it's because, and, and they were tapped in their, their imagination. They hadn't had their imagination shut them down, right? So like, want, uh, I want to tap into that. So as I'm looking at my my daughter, her name is Sonnet, uh, as in like sonetto, Italian word for song. Uh, her her middle name is Oceana, so uh, song of the ocean. Uh, Oceana is French for um, uh, ocean. So um, man, it's it's really helped me see. Uh, frankly, I'm fascinated with it, the imagination, the exploration. I'm also since I wrote a book about human genius, um, you know, where we we started paying attention to her personality cues while she was in the womb. For example, we would go to a party and and be around a bunch of people and sh she would not talk. She would not move. Like literally, we went to the hospital one time because my wife was so afraid that something was terribly wrong with her, that she was like dying or something in the womb. And mm -hmm. so we went to the hospital to get a check done because she was not moving. And it was just, hey, she's a she, she's an introvert. She doesn't like being around loud noises, and loud people. And uh, um, but it's it's uh, helped me reorient. And you have to get even more focus, like laser light focus. So I, I frankly have to cut out my ESPN and my sports uh, a little bit, and uh, and just lock in. And and I got to man up uh, to another level. So. Incredible. Well, I have to share you with Scott and Lolita, even though I could ask you questions all day long. Um, so with that said, I am going to pass the mic over to um, Lolita to ask you the first next question. Oh, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You know, as you were talking about human potential and genius and children and recognizing who they are even before they come out. I'd love to know, um, how old is your child? Very young, right? For last year, you said? Seven months. Yep, she's oh, seven months old. Yeah. Seven months old. I love it. I remember back then. Um, listen, the question that I have for you is, what activities are you doing with your child, right? With your seven month old or plan to maybe within the first two years to really help to bring out that imagination you were talking about? You know, it's more important for a child's development. I learned this from uh, the book, How to Multiply Your Kid's Intelligence uh, from the human, uh, I think it's Human Growth Institute. Um, and it's more important for your child to learn than it is to play. Like they love learning. And so one of the things we're doing is, uh, you know, we are very, very intentional about, uh, we, want, uh, we want to teach our child how to read by 18 months old. Um, I, in the book, they actually break down some of the children that by age 18 months old, they know 600 words, 600 words, crazy. Or, and even like some of them can deep dive into a sw 10 foot swimming pool. Um, and so we're going to test, at, test and experiment with a lot of these things. My wife, she actually learned how to read by the time she was two, two and a half years old. Um, I was like a slow learner. I could barely talk at like four and a half. So um, anyway, we're, we're going to be testing out. And look at you parts. now, Mike Zeller. Look at you now. <laughs> I, I you know, still I, slur my words sometimes, though. You know, before we move over to Scott, one of the things in the after show, hopefully you will meet us over on Clubhouse after the oh, yeah. 30 hour. But I'd love to talk about your perspective later. So not now, but just think about, you know, how hard do we push our children into what we know that, yeah will help them thrive versus allowing them to explore, kind of think Montessori. So I can't wait to talk about that when we get on um, Clubhouse. Yeah, hey, it's, it's vital. I'm with you, Lolita. Scott, my bad. Hey, good morning, Mike. Thank you for joining us. And I've heard amazing things about you. So let me ask you something. We always say, you know, we all should have our perfect avatar, our perfect client. Who is your perfect client or avatar that you can make the most impact with? Yeah, my, mine is probably a type three on the Enneagram or they're a very driven high achiever. 
Um, I love working with hungry people. And, and, uh, you know, we all probably do as well. We don't um, know any of those over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Never, never heard of them. <laughs> right. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I love, uh, I, I've really got two core avatars from my two different, um, uh, you know, trees or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got my, uh, for my thought leader, I, I work with a lot of authors, speakers, uh, coaches, and I help them develop what I call the prosperous expert pathway, which is six pillars, uh, get your money mindset, right. Find your zone of genius. Third, find your 4% client can produce 64% of your revenue. Fourth, create an irresistible offer for that 4% client aligned with your zone of genius. And then fifth, build your A player team that helps you scale and removes yourself. And then sixth, uh, build your expert pathway. And I've found that, uh, authors, speakers, et cetera, and that have already got some traction. Um, you know, they already have a train moving. They, the train's just not moving as fast, not as, uh, optimally as they, they would like. Um, and, and they're, they're ready. They know they are missing a few levers and offer. I love creating areas this will offer. I think every single business, when they hit that hockey stick growth, it comes down to an irresistible offer. Something is off in the offer, but if you get like, I can go to Dropbox, I can go to Tesla, I can go to, um, you know, Russell Brunson, whoever, there's irresistible offers. Um, and then the next piece, uh, e-commerce. I love working with seven, eight figure e-commerce guys because of my partnership with Colin Wayne. Um, but I think finding that person who you can really help man, it's, it's absolutely vital. And, and I think it's not, it, it's really 15 to 20 questions or 15 to 20 conversations with people to find your core avatar. What I've found. Wow. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. Yeah. So Mike, you have so much knowledge to share. That's one thing I'm always blown away when I talk to you. I feel like you're one of those people who you're just so knowledgeable. So first Lolita already said, come hang out with us on clubhouse. Um, from 8.30 to 9, so everyone can ping you with questions. But in the meantime, I know you have a book coming out this year, and I want you to tell everyone what's in the book, what they can learn, where they can get it. I want to hear all about the book. You got it. Let me grab it here. So, you know, just working with a lot of entrepreneurs and leaders, not just entrepreneurs, I've worked with executives at the IRS to uh, a lot of different entrepreneurs. Um, so I created this book, Genius Within. Uh, let's get it right there created that and it's on Amazon or you can go to geniuswithinbook.com and get it for free uh, and just cover shipping and handling. Um, but what I've found is, is there's four main areas that if you gather the clues and we want to be relentlessly obsessed with gathering clues about our genius. And here's why. If you get, how many of us have struggled with uncertainty or doubt in this pandemic, right? Or like you're in the transition season, right? Like me too, right? transition season. So how do you how do you figure out your next level of genius? Well, our whole lives are littered with clues, but our challenges is they're scattered. They're, it's like the, the seeds are blowing in the wind, all right? But if you get all the clues and you gather them on the same table, then much like Jim Collins and his Good to Great books and his uh, Built to Last and all that, what does he do? His first job is to get all the clues, all the data on the table like so that the patterns emerge it's like they pop like popcorn when you have enough clues um and so the clues show up in four main areas first your unique talents second your key relationships third your defining life experiences and fourth values and passions so i have people go through five different personality tests why five they all measure something different like wealth dynamics shows you your natural pathway to building wealth Second, you're, after they gather all those data, answer seven questions on each of those. Then I go into uh, key relationships. Your key relationships, there's people that bring you life versus death. If you get clarity around that, guess what? Now you, you're, you can step more into those relationships. Third, and we've got, you know, our messes become our message, our breakdowns become our breakthroughs. We've got those littered throughout our life. And if we tie them in, to our passions, tie them into our relationships, tie them into our values. Guess what? Now it starts emerging. So that's that's what I love. Uh, you can get a copy of it, guys, for free at uh, geniuswithinbook.com, and uh, message me as well if uh, if you can't find that or on Amazon. So thanks for asking, Sarah. 
Yeah, Mike, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And you're going to be on the, the after show, right? You're going to be of there. Of course. Except, how, except how could I miss it? So, I tell you what, leave your comments, leave your questions for Mike. Also, join us on Clubhouse at 830 so you can ask him directly. But, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. And we sincerely appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I know you guys got Alexander about to rock it out. Uh, he's looking fresh with his hair. I need to I need to take some hair tips from Alexander. Um, but guys, thank you for having me. You guys rock. Pleasure. And uh, we'll see you soon. Mike, you and I both. I mean, Alexander's hair is always on point. But what I'm going to ask everybody out there, please be sure and comment across all social media. Please. So that way Alexander can find your comments and he's going to share your comments live on the show. But we need your comment. Plus, we want your feedback. We want to know how we're doing. Alexander, I'm passing it to you. What are they saying in the streets? Alexander, you're muted, but I can't wait to hear you because you're moving, moving. <laughs> Listen, we're switching up platforms here. I'm having to learn new things, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> First off, I have to just really quickly say that I'm loving this stream yard where you're seeing all the different comments pop up i'm loving it it's given me life and so uh my name is alexander gonzalez coming to you live from st petersburg florida here with all things social seeing you here on these clubhouse streets on these linkedin streets on these youtube streets all over the place and for the first time today i don't know if this has been happening but i hadn't seen it actually the video on twitter but we were live on twitter which was really exciting for me First and foremost, uh, Scott, your buddy, I know someone that you love, someone that I used to know on Clubhouse, haven't seen him in a while, Bent St. Hours says, Scott Simons, my man. I know that you guys have a very close friendship. Also, we see that Valerie Oakley, Oakley says, clarity plus confidence equals commitment to success, quoting Lolita Walker. Yes, Twitter is rocking this morning. Dr. Jamicia coming in hot with accountability breeds greatness. What is up, Gloria Bond? I'm loving these pop-ups. I'm it's giving me life. So give me all the love. I want to see all about it, y'all. I want to see all about it. Also, Valerie Oakley, with Valerie today, friend, you are winning the comment award. She states, celebrate yourself, create a brag folder, much like what Ramon Ray was actually referencing during the good news with Ramon Ray. Gloria Bond coming in hot with go with the plan and execute, quoting, quoting Miss Lolita Walker. Christina Howard, our queen on Twitter, says, hold other people accountable for the progress you want to see in your life. And she also quotes, your words and your actions matter, referencing again the learning and teaching that Lolita gave us this morning. Dora Maria said, there are no shortcuts for hard work and discipline. Scott Simon has a heart of gold. And yes, value people all the time. And this one I loved because Valerie Oakley said, Glenn Lundy, your spirit is throughout this entire project. Trailblazer, door opener, look at the fruit of your labor. Such powerful and so many comments were coming in hot about Mike Zeller, quoting him like it's not really failure if you learn. People just love knowing that you can even find out your personality in utero and look forward to hearing his, son, his child reading at 18 months, hopefully on YouTube, because I know that I want to watch that for sure. Talk to me, people. <laughs> Alexander, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I am digging all of the comments popping up. I'm loving StreamYard. So, so good. Makes your job so much more easier. I totally believe it. Listen, one of the things that I was saying um, in my head was that um, – we're taking all hair product endorsements until you launch yours. So I just want to go ahead and put that out there. There it is right there. We are taking all hair product endorsements till you launch your own. We are taking names, product names for Alexander's product. What do you think it should be called? Because it's coming hot in the 2023. We're claiming it. Okay. So I think I have a name. I just popped in my head for the first time. I've never even thought of it. I think it's going to be love. Love your hair. Okay. Yeah. Love your okay. hair. You know what I'm saying? Love your hair enough to put quality product in it. Love your hair enough to walk out the door always looking good. Love your hair enough 
to have it ready for others. I just made all that up. But Listen, you know, that's a whole campaign right there. Love your hair enough to do what? I'm digging it. All right, we won't go down the rabbit hole, but we have been nothing but awesomeness today. And you're bringing so much energy. I think one of the things is, you know, when you are going to something, when the leader is not able to be here and a show rocks on, what do you guys think? <laughs> For me, it's the timing. I'm like, what? I, I'm we are on time on the minute. I'm like, okay. Like, I know when to get on. I know what to do. What's up, Rita? I I think it's been phenomenal, and um, I think honestly, as someone that's a little bit on the outside looking in, you guys are sitting more in the pocket. And what I mean by that is, I feel you guys are getting so much more comfortable of this host of this incredible show that it feels more like you guys have been TV show hosts for years. And so for me, it's been all the growth. That's been unbelievable. So Alexander, you've got the hair products. Could you put that hair on? Could someone Photoshop that? Someone Photoshopped me on my pop tarts yesterday. So, you know, I'm trying to get, look at this endorsement deal. I'm trying to, where it's over here. Yeah. Trying to get, right there it is. Trying to get someone to help me. But if someone would Photoshop Alexander's hair, put it on me and maybe Lolita and Ramon, you know, let's see. Let's see what Put love in front of it. Love your hair. I'm just saying, y'all, we have we have we have a partnership deck. If anyone need, has a contact to Pop Tarts you want me to shoot it over to, I will customize it. Um, but Alexander, to what you said about us all jumping in, um, and to Lolita's point as well, and I feel like there was a day this week, last week, they all run together. We were talking about teamwork. And I have to tell you to your exact point, Alexander, like it's everyone on this team is a team. You know, Glenn fired off a text to myself and Candace, and he trusted us to decide what we wanted to do, right? We had a call. We called Ramon. Ramon hopped on StreamYard late last night, right? Scott and Lolita both. I sent Lolita a text at like 10 o'clock last night, like, hey, girl, you got the opening monologue. We believe in you. And she's like, okay. You know what I mean? Voice about Scott Simon. Same thing. Like, and so as you said, it's, it's, you know, just trusting your team that everyone can step up and step in and leaning on each other. And again, saying, Lolita, can you please do an opening monologue? You know, Scott, can you do your pop? Like just, just trusting everyone and how brilliant they are and asking for that help and doing it all as a, as a collective. And also I have to say, to the point you just made, every single person listening, sharing and commenting, you are part of our team. Yes. Like the comments hype us up. The sharing hypes us up. You being here with us, like shouting out what resonates, you know, dropping your comments, every single host and member of this team, every single person watching, you are part of our team and you're why we showed up today. Like Scott said earlier about impact. Um, oh, we, you're, you're all show up people. You're all my people. So I'm just- Sarah, I'm I wanna people. actually take it a step further because I think you're right. It's about Glenn trusting you guys. But I think that most importantly, well, first off, the leader has to trust his people, right? But you have to trust yourself. And if you didn't trust yourself to do the good work, you wouldn't do it. Case in point, this weekend we meant, oh, that's the quote that I already read. I, saw, I love it that it popped up just now. But that, that, that this weekend, you know, where I got to be on stage at the virtual conference, well, there was a breakout session that 10 minutes before they came up to me and said, hey, we need you to lead a breakout session on fear. Can you do it? This was the first time I'd ever been asked to lead a breakout session. I could have freaked out. I could have said, no, I'm not ready. You're giving me 10 minutes. But I said, this is my opportunity to show up and show out. So next time when they have a short list, I'm on that short list. So I gathered myself. I went into the bathroom. I got into state. I was like full on Tony Robbins it like, <laughs> like, you know, doing like all the things to get in state. And I went in and delivered a 20 minute talk on fear and not for nothing. I'm not afraid to say I slayed it because I trusted myself because I knew where I wanted to go. And so it comes from that trust that was given to me by my leader, in this case, Glenn giving you guys trust, and then you guys taking the trust within yourselves to actually execute at the level that you have. And that's where the magic sauce happens. That was my quote, Valerie, feel the fear and no, do it anyways true. on my talk. I'm not even joking. I, I went in with one quote and that was it. And then I, I said this, that the, and I talked a little bit about it yesterday, the bridge between abundance and fear is action is feeling the fear and do it anyways. And that's what you guys do. This is not to say that you don't get scared or nervous to be on these cameras. You guys feel it, 
but you do it anyways and you're leading by example. Alexander, I have got to say this and we have got to get over to our guest in one second to give us some awesomeness with some music because she is coming in all the way hot. Alexander, you're using a whole bunch of you's and everything. No, we and us. We, because Alexander, you are part of hashtag Rise and Grind. I want you to know it, feel it, trust it because you show up every single day. All right? I had It's been on my heart. It's been on my mind and you done said it too many times up in here today. So I'm gifting you a little bit of accountability to change the language up <laughs> thank you yes we absolutely yes and i will just say speaking of we glenn lundy we miss you today we're we're carrying the ball to the goal for you but we absolutely your presence is missed here lolita walker if you could introduce our next guest because you are our musical lyricist on on board on the team i'm gonna pass the mic back to you sister <laughs> listen it's, it's not rocket science but we are going all the way in our special guest is coming back one more time and she is talking about city on lockdown let's go My gosh, so good, so good, so good. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to toss it over to Sarah, who I know wants to get all the way in about questions on this beautiful song. Yeah, so one question I have for you is that your video production is so beautiful. To me, it really matches the sentiment of the songs. And one question I have for you is, I'm curious about the whole creative process from writing the lyrics to singing the song to doing the arrangement to creating the videos. How kind of involved are you in each of those pieces and what's that process look and feel like for you? I'm very hands on like with everything, with the writing the story for the video, the directing, the styling, the makeup, <laughs> uh, the, of course, singing, uh, 
the locations, like very, very hands on because I'm just, I just want to be involved in everything in a good way, not annoying way. <laughs> I mean, what a fantastic song. And we referenced earlier in the show how I did, how going through the lockdown was very difficult on a lot of people. And that song just really resonated with me, as I'm sure with a whole lot of people. And what was the name of the song again? And how can people find that song? The song is called City on Lockdown. And you can find it on all these fees and uh, YouTube, just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll definitely have that on replay. I don't know if you're seeing the comments right here, but folks are saying, listen, I am a frontline worker and that needs to be played time and time and time again. So over and over again, we are a city on lockdown, right? And I think that you just gave us encouragement. And the video was so spectacular. There it is. Rita said, I'm a frontline worker. This song should be played at every hospital. Yeah. I mean, I know in America, I'm in New York all the time, but I'm in Amsterdam right now. We're still on the lockdown and there's so many countries that are still on the lockdown. And yeah, this song came about when the lockdown just happened and I flew from L.A. to Amsterdam. I uh, know from L.A. to New York and then Amsterdam and New York. I remember I was sitting in the cab from the airport to my friend's house and the whole city was a ghost town. It was so scary. So two days, no, one day later I wrote the song because I was like, oh my God, I don't even know if I'm going to see my muse and how long is it going to be for? And they were like, he said, I remember he said, oh, it's only going to be maybe two months. I'm like, two months, this is way too long. It's It, it was nine months. Yeah. A long yeah. time, yeah. It is. And you know, um, what's interesting about the lockdown is it allows your creativity to really come about. So I loved earlier you talked about, it's just this feeling that comes inside. It's like this something in music and writing lyrics is this expression. So I think one of the things we could leave folks with is allow yourself to express freely, to open up you know, yourself to unlimited possibilities. I write also. In my times mm -hmm. where I'm in my most be free, I write, I write poetry, but I just write and write and write. And that that's how it starts. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, in the shower, I sound really good in a shower. I don't know if you I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, I, I agree with you. The the writing really helps and the whole lockdown, I think a lot of I, I, I mean I think for a lot of people in the beginning it was a good thing. Me and my producer never stopped working. We created like half of my uh uh um project via FaceTime. <laughs> And we was working every day, you know, but we're over it now. I think everybody's over it. <laughs> well, I uh, thank you so much for bringing so much light and energy and heart and beauty and soul to our morning. We're so grateful you're here. I see you're on Clubhouse. So Will you be joining us over there in a few minutes um, so that, you know, if anyone has any more questions for you or if they want to connect with you, they have the opportunity to hang out with you for the after show? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much again for being here. Um, we are so grateful. So Scott and Lolita, I need to hear from you what you thought of today's show. Obviously, we missed Glenn. He's irreplaceable. But what you think? I feel like, first of all, I have to shout out Ramon Ray and Candice, who kept it moving. Candice, you know, keeps us running like a well oil machine always. And Ramon just like produced this whole show, pulled every comment, pulled every shot. Actually, Ramon, I want to ask if you can come on camera. What do you think now of the fact that Glenn does that all show, every show, pulling all the production together at the same time? Um, Sarah, I um, I feel, one, that I'm with an A team of incredible humans who I love. In down times is the only time when you know what people, that's why you and I, Sarah, click. I've said, I'll say it again, because of the brief moment we went through in a valley months ago. So that's one. But going back to Glenn, I want to tell everybody, and then I'm going to get back on camera, let y'all do it, get off camera here. But I just want to say that everybody listening, what Glenn does is super human. To do a 20-minute segment, to have the presence of mind to riff and be the entertainer and host and do that, and all the buttons he has to click on the roadcast, the podcast, the pop tart, the dot tart, the UB <laughs> mic, the USB mic, the C mic. I mean, C Scott, you got it. So I'm done, but I can go on, but I know time is short, but I just want to say I Scott, asked Ramon last night when we were talking, I was like, oh, you're going to be here all show co-host with us. He was like, 
No. Because <laughs> of all the buttons and stuff. So I just, we appreciate you so much, Ramon. Appreciate you still came in with the good news. We just appreciate you so much. Can, Sarah, can I do one thing? I don't know if Candace will let me. Then we've got, I know time is short. Candace, can I, you know what I want to do, Candace. May I do it? Can bring you her on. Thumb? Bring her on. Uh, let me share a thumb up first. Can I, Candace? Cool. Well, as Candace decides that she wants okay. to come on, I, I did just want that. to give a shout out to all of the folks who are part of this amazing show because without you, we can't do anything. Hey, Candace! <laughs> you are you're muted queen. oh my gosh you guys don't understand like i literally rushed home from the gym i haven't showered i have i have mascara on that's about it so this is this is me in all my glory okay <laughs> well and listen to also to say what lolita was saying that includes every single one of our moderators on breakfast with champions starting at 4 55 a.m every single one of our speakers every single one of you who hangs out on stage every single one of you who contributes uh, and that's where we're going to go hang out with you on Clubhouse right now. Of course, Alexander Gonzalez, I don't know where you are, but we couldn't do it without you. Kim Walsh Phillips, who pops in with her segments as well. Uh, we have guest host Carmelia was here last week. Kate Bowman's going to be hopping on this week. We're a community. And so I said, every single one of our moderators, every single one of our speakers, every single one of you watching and listening on any social media platform, like, thank you for being at this breakfast table with us the best conversations that happen over breakfast we're so grateful you're here with us and uh with that said ramon you killed it let's let's end all these feeds and hop over to clubhouse how does that sound everybody?